previewing a unique approach to personal transport. The Sinclair C5 electric vehicle. Demonstrating the C5 is Managing Director of Sinclair Vehicles, Barry Wills. The vehicle is based on the theme of the recumbent cycle. The driver sits comfortably as if in an armchair and all the power of the legs from the waist down can be used for propulsion. Legislation requires that the vehicle must be principally pedal operated and can be only electrically assisted. In its electrically assisted mode, top speed must not exceed 15 miles per hour. And the total weight, complete with battery or batteries, must not be more than 60 kilograms. The motor must not exceed 250 watts. The C5 meets all these requirements comfortably and provides a unique form of personal transport. Unique in conception and unique in the research that lies behind it. Barry Wills explains. The approach here in terms of developing the product has been to really treat it as if it was a car. We, you know, we well appreciate we've got a unique form of vehicle that people, some people are going to look very critically at. And we wanted to make sure it was absolutely safe, it was absolutely reliable and was designed and developed in a very responsible way. So Sinclair approached Lotus cars, famous for their lightweight engineering and their talent for tackling problems in unorthodox ways. Colin Spooner, Lotus Director of Vehicle Engineering, explains their approach. But uh, we felt that we could, we could apply a lot of the, uh, the, our philosophy, Lotus philosophy, of, of simplicity and lightweight, you know, trying to get the thing down to the minimum number of components. One of the most significant areas of weight reduction is the frame, a single pressed steel backbone that flares out at the back to carry the rear axle. It has a family resemblance to the famous Lotus backbone car chassis. The rear axle is tubular and the manufacturing technology is based on that applied to car steering columns, a single piece that is step swaged. The steering drag link too owes much to car technology. Expertise used in the manufacture of gear shift linkage has been applied. Standard nylon cycle wheels have been upgraded from nylon to a glass reinforced nylon specification developed in conjunction with the manufacturers. The lamp is a lightweight sealed unit. The pedals are larger than cycle pedals designed to take the full thrust of power. The gearbox is all plastic. It's designed to be part of the motor assembly. The two components plug together so that the end motor casing is part of the gearbox housing. The caliper brake on the front wheel and the hub brake on one of the rear wheels have been specially developed. With that technology under the body shell, the C5 gives a comfortable ride and is easy to handle. It has stable cornering in spite of its light weight. And braking is firm and effective. But the body shell itself has its own development story. This prototype has a GRP body, but the production model will be of polypropylene injection moulding. Around three quarters of a million pounds has been invested in tooling alone to make it one of the largest moulded assemblies in the world. The two mouldings that form the body are electrically fused together using a heated tape principle. Throughout development, safety has been paramount, as Barry Wills explains. We've also taken a lot of care to ensure that the vehicle is safe as possible, not just in the basic design, but in the way we present it. The light colour is deliberate. We want the vehicle to be very visible. Um, the legislation does not force us to fit lamps, but we've decided to fit them as standard. We've got a, we've got a headlamp with a built-in white reflector, so you've seen whether the lights are on or not. We've got a rear lamp, which the 
mainland itself is as big as a car that's up to the area, and two very large red, red reflectors. Uh, the yellow that you see at the side is not just decorative, it happens to be very decorative, but it's also reflective tape. So that you've got a, a complete band along the side of the car, you've got a spinning disc arrangement on the wheels, and you've got the front wheel cover, in fact, isn't what it appears to be, isn't a wheel cover, it's a mudguard. It's static, it's, it's fitted to the front forks, it folds around the back so it stops mud splashing up the back. That area is, is reflective, the headlamps of a car, approaching car, pick it up as the vehicle is moving along the road. Um, all the switches, all the operating uh, switches are ergonomically placed within the controls. This is a membrane arrangement for a, for a hand grip. The on-off switch is underneath there as a screen. You squeeze it at the sort of side of your, of your arm. There's a, indicators are, are going to be available as accessories. One other accessory that uh, we developed, this is still very much a mock-up, it's in tooling, but uh, we're providing the means to allow the customer, if he wishes, to install a, a tall reflector, so that if he feels that he, he needs to be a, a bit more visible from on high, then he's got a red reflector at the front, white reflector, sorry, white at the front, and red at the rear, to help with that visibility question. This is the development workshop at Lotus, where components for the C5 have been tested and developed. These tests have been going on for five months to give the equivalent of 5,000 miles running, equal to around three years of continuous use. This rig tests the pressed steel chassis. The chassis is twisted and a ram underneath exerts an 120 pound pull in the center to give the effect of the weight of the driver and of cornering loads. The compliance of the rear chassis legs gives most of the suspension feel. The steering rig has already completed a million cycles. The rig helps development engineers evaluate the life of the head bearings and steering bearings, and also to calculate the frequency at which adjustments need to be made in service. New materials have been developed as a result of tests on this braking rig. Lotus took a standard nylon cycle wheel and standard brake blocks. The nylon wheel has been superseded by a wheel made to a specification of 30% glass filled nylon. Standard brake blocks have been replaced by a new material developed specially for the C5. These tests ensure that braking is powerful and effective even with worn or maladjusted components. They also ensure the optimum life of the braking system in terms of wear on both brake blocks and wheels. Optimum riding comfort is assured by the specification of these small rubber mouldings. Connected to the base of the seat, they're sandwiched between the body and the chassis and allow movement to take place between them. The body is allowed to flex torsionally and the amount of flex is governed by these mouldings. A number of different materials were tested before the ideal component was developed. This rolling road test is familiar in the motor industry. The components are assembled as a unit in a test cycle that is repeated every 20 seconds. The ram gives an 150 pound download equivalent to an uneven road or a bump up or down the curb. Side loads simulate cornering. The axle, wheels, tires and brakes are also tested on this rig. The test is run first on the pedals and then on the battery. The drive motor is also under test. Electric and electronic components are run for performance and reliability. Testing of components in workshop conditions is complemented by durability tests on actual vehicles. These two prototypes have been running continuously in 24-hour shifts, travelling at between 10 and 12 miles an hour.
they will each complete 5,000 miles. The tortuous durability circuit has an uneven surface and includes a hill feature. Results from the test rigs of the durability vehicles are compared directly and then correlated to produce a vehicle that is efficient, reliable, comfortable and safe. Earlier testing at the Motor Industry Research Association helped define several performance and safety related functions. Tests on a one in five hill established that the handbrake conforms to European car legislation. Even with one tyre deflated to simulate a puncture, braking was still controlled and effective. The Prescott hill climb circuit was used to test both hill climbing performance and brake descent. Parts of the track were flooded and many of the tests were conducted in sleet and snow. Accessories to make the C5 an all-weather vehicle have been designed and are seen here during development. Waterproof side screens fit on front and rear wheel arches and are attached to the body shell by Velcro. The protective cape with a hood is also attached by Velcro to the front and sides of the vehicle. There's also protection for the driver against the possibility of running down the battery or overheating the motor. A microchip control display shows the equivalent of fuel and temperature gauges. The amount of power remaining in the battery is monitored and so is the level of energy being drawn off. Flashing lights and a buzzer give a warning if the battery is running low or if the motor is in danger of overheating. An automatic cutout prevents either. But even when the battery cuts out, there is still a reserve to power front and rear lights as the vehicle is pedalled. Although the battery is housed in a casing similar to that of a car battery, internally it's the result of intensive development. The design of the battery allows deep discharging of 80% of its capacity and allows it to be recharged a minimum of 300 times. This means that in normal everyday use, a battery life of over a year can be anticipated. The cover is locked on and the battery cannot be removed without a key. This key energizes the system and there's an emergency button to cut off power instantly. It cannot be reactivated without the key. The same key is used to lock the boot, a weatherproof container big enough for groceries, briefcase or school bags. On the road, the C5 has a top powered speed of 15 miles an hour and a range of around 20 miles. A second battery can be fitted which almost doubles the range. Even with two batteries installed, the C5 is still within the 60 kilogram weight limit. C5 falls within the category of an electrically assisted cycle in the UK. The law allows drivers of 14 years of age or over to operate this category of vehicle. In addition, no driver licensing, vehicle registration, road fund licensing, compulsory insurance or protective helmets are required. C5 running and maintenance costs are extremely low. It does not pollute the environment. Backed by significant investment and research, it represents the first of a planned family of vehicles that will revolutionise personal transport in the same way that the products of Sinclair Research have transformed personal computers. Mm -hmm.